Hi there, my name is Devansh and I'm the lead tutor at FinTutors. I'm sure you would have already been on the channel and gone through a lot of our SEMA related explanations. But this video is specifically created for the upcoming strategic case study exam. So are you somebody who has taken the exam and is apprehensive as to what to study? how to study it because the syllabus area is vast. There is the entire E, P and F syllabus. So what should I study? I have limited time. What should I focus upon? This video answers your question on a very, very simple level and shows you the direction that students must take. So we have identified the top exam issues, the top exam questions that do often come up and we have gathered the same as part of one video as part of one document that we will share with you and these are SEMA favorite topics these are topics that often come up in the exam everything that we have analyzed and we have presented as part of this video is very well founded because we are SEMA registered and accredited tuition providers and have been delivering pass rates over 80 percent so Everything that you see in this video is well thought of, well presented, and I am sure that you're going to find this entire series helpful. Now to come to the exam topics. How do we develop and accumulate these topics? You may be wondering, right? How can you figure out 10, 11, 12 areas which will be asked in the exam? First and foremost, we focus on the pre-scene. The entire pre-scene analysis that is done by us is very, very detailed. And when we go through the pre-scene as tutors with the years of experience that we have, we try to find out the problems with the company, the areas that can be asked in the exam. We overlap them with the E3, P3 and F3 syllabus. And we try to pick out the underlying theme. That helps us develop important areas or important questions that can come up in the exam. And then we create our own mock questions around the same to give our students practice. So we focus on the pre-scene from very many different perspectives. And we obviously use our experience and expertise to pick out exam favorite topics and present it to you in a way that you can understand, that you can follow. Now we have identified 10 topics that are key, that do come up in the exam often. We've presented them in a list of 1 to 10. But that doesn't mean that the first topic is the most important one and the 10th topic is the least important one. No, the topics are not chronologically arranged. These are just 10 areas or 10 topics that we feel can come up in the exam and all of these are important. Without further ado, let us begin. So we will go backwards in our discussion. We'll try to go backwards in our discussion, making sure that we cover every topic one by one. So like I mentioned, uh, you know, because we are discussing topic number 10 first, it doesn't mean that this is the least important topic or this is the most important topic, nothing like that. These are just 10, 11 areas that we feel can be tested in the exam and are often tested in the exam. That is why we are pointing them out to you. That is why we are bringing them up to you. So all of these areas are well researched and they are exam favorite areas that can definitely tend to come up in your exam and they have come up in past exams. And we feel that when I look at this specific case study, which is Snack Wheel, the company that they've given us for the May and August uh, 2022 attempt is called Snack Wheel. It's a company that has a delivery service. So it's a fast food delivery service company. Like we have Uber Eats or uh, Zomato or Swiggy or whatever around the world. There are different options which are available. So when I look at that company and when we deeply analyze the pre-scene, we felt that these were the topics that can come up, that can be tested. And that is why, you know, we just felt will give you more directed study, more directed approach to your revision. So the first topic that we thought we should discuss is corporate governance. Now corporate governance is part of your core area E as well. So it's part of the blueprint or the core areas that SEMA have identified. So definitely it can come up in the exam. 
So the question now is what type of questions come up? What can they ask me? So first and foremost, a very straight outlook from the pre-scene is that you should know what your current corporate governance structure is, which we have explained in a very detailed way in our pre-scene analysis. We've made a corporate governance discussion there. But the type of questions that come up is, you know, they'll say that often one of the major executive directors is leaving. What will be the board's complexion? Will it apply or will it stick to the corporate governance rules? So you should know the corporate governance rules. Again, they can ask you that uh, the chairman is leaving the audit committee. Is this allowed? Is this okay? You know, how will we still meet the corporate governance rules? So you may have to suggest appointing another non-executive director, promoting a current non-executive director to a non-executive chairman. So for that, you will have to know the rules very care carefully. You'll have to know what a risk committee is, audit committee is, remuneration committee is, which is straight from your P3 syllabus. So what could be the implications of a director being added, a director being subtracted, a director leaving one of these committees, leaving the organization altogether. All of these are favorite exam questions that come up. And because of this, your corporate governance topic from your P3 syllabus and its guidelines become very important, specifically because of the nature of this case study snack wheel that they've given us. So keep this topic in mind. And I've also given you study areas. So once you've revised these areas, now obviously I gave you the area over here, P3, corporate governance. Once you've revised it, and then when you write a mock question with me on this topic, and then when you go into the exam and let's say a corporate governance question comes up, just imagine your level of preparedness and your confidence that you'll have. That is the whole reason why we do this top 10 topics plus mock questions. And then we send you into the exam where you're brimming with confidence from the very, very beginning. So please remember, just going through these topics will not be enough. You'll have to actually put yourself in a situation where you are typing, where you are, uh, you know, independently and objectively typing, submitting an answer that is marked, checked and corrected by a professional service like ours. And then you develop the confidence that you need to do well on this exam. So remember, these are important topics, but they get supplemented by the questions and the mock questions that we do. So throughout this entire course, we'll advocate mock writing because without that, we do not feel a student can do well on the exam. We do not feel that. So any of these 10 topics that you see, we will test you on those topics and other topics as well as part of our mock questions so that you feel ready. And when you enter into the exam, if any one of these topics comes up, you're ready to go. You already have an answer, a structure in your mind. You simply then need to put it down. That's the whole idea behind our preparation. Next topic I want to discuss is the risk management topic. Topic number nine. Now risk management is also part of your core areas. This is also part of the blueprint that SEMA have released. This is part B of your core areas. Now again, looking at the structure, looking at the nature of our company, which is very, very technology based, which is very, very based on the internet, because you know, you order for, you use this food delivery service to an application on a mobile application. So obviously there's a whole lot of data that is being involved. There is a whole lot of risks that can occur. Specifically, cyber risks is what I want to speak about. So what questions will come up in the risk management area you may be thinking? Firstly, types or risks and how the risks could be mitigated. They may say that this is the specific risk that we are facing. How will I mitigate this risk? So over here, you can use your simple business acumen and provide suggestions. Secondly, you can use the TARA framework for risk management, which is part of your E3 syllabus. So if you've revised your syllabus, if you've done these topics, and then if you've solved mock questions with us, you've pretty much covered everything there is for this exam. 
So type of risks can be asked. How you can manage these risks can be asked. So they may give you a list of risks and you must identify how each risk should be managed, how you will deal with each risk specifically for your company and your company only. So again, the TARA framework can be used here. Very importantly, cyber risk, cyber risk management, the risk cyber risk management framework, all of this from your E3 syllabus becomes vital because of the technological and technical nature of our company. So cyber risks that our company could face and how we can protect ourselves from the same. This is something that you must quiz yourself from and this knowledge can be directly derived from your E3 syllabus. So like I said, we must study the risk categories and digital risk aspects. We must also study the TARA risk management method, which I have spoken about twice already. So this is the ninth area, which we feel is important because of the nature of our company stack wheel. Topic number eight that we want to discuss now is strategic options and decision making. So obviously in the strategic case study exam, you have been given the important role of a senior finance manager. So you will have to make strategic decisions for your business. This is part A from your core areas and this has everything to do with strategy giving, decision making, looking into the future. So what kind of questions can you expect around this strategic scenario? So you may be asked to evaluate the direction the company you know, should look into by giving importance to the porter's generic strategies they might say that you know using the porter's generic strategies create a suggestion so you need to know what the porter's generic strategies are same way they may ask you to evaluate growth opportunities for the company using the ansofs matrix so you may need to know what the ansofs matrix is they may ask you to decide if we should go with this decision should not go with this decision should go with this strategy, not go with this strategy. So for that, you'll have to use the SFA model, suitability, feasibility, acceptability. You'll have to know what that means. You may also be asked to make acquisition related decisions, merger related decisions, joint method of expansion related decisions, synergy related decisions. So all of this brings about your business acumen plus the knowledge of your E3 syllabus, which is very, very important in this case. And strategic decisions are often asked in the case study exam. So remember, this is only the first step where, you know, we're giving you the important topics. When students sign up with us, these important topics are automatically covered in exactly exam styled mock questions. So, you know, students are very much prepared in the exam because they've revised the topics. They know the pre scene because we'll do that for them. And then they've practiced exam styled mock questions, which are obviously the quality of the exam. And each answer is marked, checked and corrected personally for students. And that's makes th that makes a difference over here. Hence this area and practice is very, very important. Area seven that we feel is important is business oriented questions, which will be testing your ability as a senior finance manager to make, you know, telling decisions for your company. And this overlaps between various core areas. This overlap, this is not a, this is not going to fit into the mold of one core area or one blueprint area, because these are business oriented situations, which can easily come up in any case study situation. So what type of questions are we speaking about? We're speaking about tabular analysis. They can give you a table of, you know, two companies that you may be looking to acquire, which company is better. You may have to suggest looking at the ratios. You won't have to calculate anything, but your analysis will come in very important or will, will be very important here. Same way you may be, you may have to identify key stakeholders and then how you will deal with those stakeholders that also you may need to explain, you know, analysis of a business scenario. Is this cost effective for my business? Is this cost beneficial for my business? 
so analysis of any scenario that is purely business acumen oriented can definitely be asked same way they may ask you about you know whether implementing ir or gri guidelines integrated reporting is you know can be beneficial for your company you'll have to know what ir and gri means first of all this is from your e3 syllabus performance appraisal management of performance analysis of performance can also be asked so is important area and then employee motivation satisfaction employee issues running of the business issues these are common scenarios that can be raised in the exam and you must be ready to counter them the only way to be ready to counter them is to have sound technical knowledge first step secondly sound company knowledge so pre seen analysis thirdly writing a mock question so you can develop these skills fourth to have that mock question that you've written marked checked and corrected personally all of these four we do for you because we are sema registered tuition providers and we've created this material to enhance your learning process to make it more straightforward and to tell you that these are the aspects you should be focusing upon next topic we are analyzing is hedging and exchange related risks part of your core area a which you will exclusively find in your f3 syllabus it's a very very technical area and a technical matter so pay attention to these because you will have to study these or you will have to know the basics of these methods or these topics that i'm going to you know pronounce for you or bring to you because without technical knowledge it will be difficult to create a meaningful explanation for you if it were e3 or p3 topics like let's say corporate governance or ethics you can come up with an explanation of your own no matter what you know even if you have not studied it you'll be able to write something but for f3 technical topics or for certain p3 technical topics you require that study to even start your answer this section is one of them so what type of questions can we expect obviously there are not going to be any sums you won't have to solve anything you won't have to write anything you won't have to you know uh, create a solution for anything but explanations are key so what type of questions come up here so risks related to currencies to ensure foreign currency trading with volatile markets do not impact the cash positions of your company they will not ask any calculation but what hedging method can we used in this particular situation they can ask you you know we are going to pay xyz company in xyz time what i have to pay this much amount what are the currency hedges that i can put in place to make sure i am not adversely impacted give me your suggestions so you should be able to suggest different currency hedging methods this is straight from your f3 syllabus you know two three methods you should be able to say with your own explanation your own pointers it doesn't have to be textbook oriented but you should be able to explain it in your own words same way risk related to interest rates so interest rate going to change interest rate risk management techniques should be known it's part of your f3 syllabus your own explanations two to three lines about each topic couple advantages couple disadvantages knowing how that method will work is the key here so risk related to currencies know the methods but simple easy explanations risk related to interest rates know the methods simple easy explanations same way arguments related to currency risk where home currency weakens foreign currency rises so the effects of interest rates inflation rates on currencies should also be known because they can create an exam situation saying that uh, you know the uh, we are going to purchase company x it's in country z where the inflation rate is low what does this mean how will this affect the transaction should be able to deliver explanations and that's similarly present in your f3 syllabus so economic variables that affect your business these are common exam topics that do often come up and these are straight forward from your f3 syllabus make sure you've revised them now important topic number 
this is suitable sources of finance along with valuing businesses part of your core area c this also overlaps with your f3 syllabus so again in the technical zone technical area what type of questions can we expect so company may need to raise finance and hence sources of short term long term finance can be asked so you should be able to explain the different sources of short term finance you should be able to explain the different sources and suggest sources of long term finance if you choose in short term and long term obviously you will have equity options and debt options so if you choose equity option how can it be beneficial for my company if you choose debt options how can it be beneficial for my company what will be the effect on the weighted average cost of capital that needs to be kept in mind same way you can have uh, suggestions to different dividend policy methods so what is your current dividend policy which you'll know from the pre scene and should we change this dividend policy what if we change this dividend policy so you should know the different dividend policies and what each mean what in which case each can be suggested which is clearly stated down in your f3 syllabus so how to value a business that your company may be acquiring is part of your f3 syllabus business valuations for this you may need knowledge of the asset based valuation method earning based valuation method cash flow based valuation method just the simple basics of what the premise of each method is no calculations just what each method entails what it means will be enough no calculations at all only explanations that's topic 5 topic 4 then is ethics a very favorite exam question sub question i should say which does often often come up and will often come up because part of the role of the senior finance manager is to maintain ethical standards in the business and in his own ways of acting so this is part of your core area d this is very important it's part of your e3 and somewhere part of the p3 syllabus as well but majorly in e3 so what kind of ethical questions will come up they can often ask you would it be ethical or unethical for your business to enter into this new project they'll create a scenario saying you know xyz is working with xyz there's a hint of uh, you know they know each other from the past and that is why the contract is given to this company for example will it be ethical or unethical explain the ethical situation so you should know the sema code of ethics over here and what safeguards can be applied for this ethical problem this is part of your e3 syllabus and often often asked majorly the sema code of ethics need to be known same way the ethical implications of entering into a new venture can be asked and they'll create again another scenario what are the ethical issues which going with going forward with this project and what are the safeguards that i can apply in this situation a very common exam question so the sema code of ethics the safeguards on how these ethics ethical issues can be prevented are important and we ask students to do extensive mock writing practice on ethics which if you sign up with us obviously you will do because we do 25 exam style questions so we'll test you on each and every important aspect we often ask students to revise and write as much as possible because writing gives you the confidence which no other practice will give you we now speak about important topic 3 which is internal audit and appropriate controls very important section very technical section this is part of your core area e so what type of questions can we expect over here everything related to the internal audit situations that can arise in a company and the internal controls that you should have in place to prevent any problems is a very very common exam question for this you 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 know there can be various varieties of questions that can come up one of them is types of cyber risks a company can face and how can you protect yourself from these cyber risks next there can be type of different audit works what are the different audits that your company can conduct 
and how the audit process works. They often ask this. An issue in internal controls. So recommend ways to overcome these issues. So the internal controls need to be known over here. Next, the COSO model of internal controls can be recommended for appropriate internal audit control implementation in a business. So you'll have to know what the COSO model of internal control is. Cybersecurity framework should also be known and discussed because they can say that there's a cybersecurity breach in our company. Should we have the cybersecurity framework to prevent anything like this? If you don't know what the cybersecurity framework is, how will we even suggest? How will we even, you know, put it forward? Or how will you put your point forward, argument forward? The role of internal audit in our organization and the benefits of having a good internal audit team. Appointing a new head of to the audit committee and hence rediscussing the scope of the audit committee, the scope of the remunerations committee, scope of the nominations committee. What are they supposed to do? You know, what is their job? This is part of the P3 syllabus and is exclusively asked in exams. So please have your understanding around these topics clearly present and please revise them. Now just imagine your level of preparedness. If you've gone through these topics, if you've gone through the pre-scene, if you go through our blueprint explanations, which is one of a kind, and then if you write mock questions on these topics, get them mark checked and corrected professionally, then you sit the exam. Just imagine how prepared you are, how ready to go you are, and that's our aim as SEMA registered tuition providers. Topic two, which we are discussing is the digital aspects in a business. This is part A and B of your core areas. So again, business oriented questions like application of big data to our business, the benefits of big data, the drawbacks of big data. Next, what could big data strategic implementation mean for your business? If big data is a strategy that your business commits to, what would it mean for the business? How would the business change? How would the business model change? How can we better the experience of our customer using digital systems? So the benefits, drawbacks of digital data, the strategic commitment to big data is something that is important and big data has been detailed upon in our pre-scene analysis as well with a very, very comprehensive and holistic example. But it's also part of your E3 syllabus, which you must revise. Now to important area one, like I've mentioned at the very beginning of the video, this is not the most important topic. All these 10 topics are the most important ones. It's not that 10 topic is the least important. First topic is the most important. No, we worked our way backwards, but each topic that we have mentioned here, we feel is important. We feel can come up in the exam and we know has been coming up in the exam. So we've presented it to you in a, you know, in a chronological order. So the topic that we are looking at is scenario planning. This is part B of our core areas. So analysis of a new investment or a project and how it would affect our business. They can give you two, three different scenarios and tell you what is scenario planning, how to use scenario planning. What are the steps in scenario planning? Is scenario planning useful? These are the things that you should be able to answer when two or three different projects are in front of you and scenario planning has been asked. This you'll have to go through from your E3 syllabus. So two to three different scenarios given and we need to evaluate which is the best scenario for our company. Whether scenario planning could be used in that particular situation. So is scenario planning a good tool? Usefulness of scenario planning. Whether scenario planning will be beneficial for your business or not. So think about your pre-seen company and imagine how could scenario planning be, you know, useful for your company, the steps in scenario planning, and just imagine two or three very viable scenarios for your company and use them as an example to create your scenario planning answer. When students will go through my pre-seen analysis, we've laid out many different scenarios that can come up in the exam. So like I said, our material is very, very holistic. It starts with the revision aspect, E3, P3 and F3, for which we give you all the material, which we give you all the summaries for. 
Then we go to the detailed pre-scene, which again, we give you everything for. It's a three-hour pre-scene analysis. Then we introduce mock writing for you. And mock writing will be on our exam portal that is exactly like the exam, tam timed like the exam, the scenario is like the exam, the question quality is exactly like the exam, the difficulty is like the exam. And at each stage, we'll be marking, checking, correcting your answers personally, showing you where you have to improve, what you must do to improve, what your improvement process should be like, all of that is part of study with us we will leave the link to the uh, to our scs page in the description box below you can just click on it and check out our different study options we have variety of study options that you can choose from depending on the level of flexibility that you need the comprehensiveness of the course that you need so we are here to help you at every stage i hope you found this video helpful and i hope to see you on the other side best of luck